Hi everyone, Katrina Sawa here, the Jumpstart Your Biz Coach with jumpstartyourmarketing.com and this group, Jumpstart Your Marketing and Business Now group on Facebook here. And I just wanted to call and say, or not call, I didn't call you, I'm just going live on Facebook. Uh, wanted to just check in with you guys and make sure you've got your planning in order for next year. I know there's a lot to do when you're planning a whole new year and some of you are probably already done. Some of you might not have even lifted a finger towards any of your planning yet. And I'm just curious where you're at. I'd love to hear your comments and see your comments come in as we're um, on, as I'm on the live today. Uh, so you know, get your pencils out, get a notepad out. I'm gonna go through just some of the quick things that I do and just know that I have a couple uh, business planning resources for you. I actually did a call the other night, uh, 90 minutes long. It was a free webinar <clears throat> for my international speaker network and you can access the recording of that. So I'll give you the replay uh, link to the recording of that um, when I'm done in the comments. But I would love to hear what your big plans are for next year, what your big goals are, what are the top three things you really want to accomplish or launch perhaps in your business uh, or your life. And uh, you know, what? when do you get started planning? And what is your, if you want to share your money goal, I always like to talk money because too many people don't talk enough about money. And I think it's really important to make sure you keep your big money goal on top of mind. And the way I break down your money goal is actually by month. Like, I don't want you to say, well, Katrina, I want to make $100,000 next year um, because that doesn't keep you on target every month to make sales and every week. So if you break it down, $100,000, that's $8,333 a month, right? Well, that breaks down to a little over $2,000 a week. So what are you doing to sell $2,000 per week? That's what I want to know. So that's what you want to be focused on because too many entrepreneurs I see are not focused on the day-to-day -day revenue generating activities that you need to do and how many things you need to do in order to reach the number of people that you need to reach in order to have as many conversations as you need to have in order to make the kind of money that you want to make. You have to think of all of those little steps in a row. But I wanted to talk more about um, you're planning today, and so I have just a couple hot topics I'm thinking. So first I like to look at your big vision, right? So where do you really want to build this business in your life? How do you wanna design the, the, the business? So we wanna design the business around the kind of life you wanna live, not fit your life in around your business. I know sometimes I look a little too busy, but trust me, I still take a lot of time, quality time with my family. Sometimes I'm in the middle of launching something bigger and I have to spend more time, like a new book or a, a live event or something. But for the most, but there's plenty of time where I can just take off for a four day weekend and not even think about it, right? Or I can plan out that I'm not gonna work this whole week and go on vacation and just move appointments around accordingly. So how do you wanna work in your business and how do you want your life to look like? Because sometimes, we only want to work 20 hours a week or maybe you only want to work when your kids are in school and not anything after say three o'clock in the afternoon Monday through Friday right you can do that you can choose to do that but you have to decide how you want your business to look and then you have to build the business accordingly that might mean that you have higher price programs and services so that you don't have to you know sell so much quantity of things if you're lower priced items so you look at the big vision and then you look at the money goals like we talked about a minute ago, right? Make sure they're on a monthly basis. What do you need to take in every month? I talk about your need number versus your want number. Your need number is the number that you need to bring in uh, to your household to pay your household bills, but also your business bills and your team and or website updates and or um, maybe have uh, money to pay for a coach or get in a coaching program because we should always be learning more and more, right? Especially sales and marketing. And then, uh, so you have a need number. That's the, the number you need that you're not, right? That you need every month to pay all those bills and uh, be able to live without pulling out of savings or an IRA or something like that or stressing about money. So you need money for food and all that kind of stuff. So be realistic with that need number and put things in the need number 
Um, it's not a budget, it's a need number. That way, if uh, you know you want to hire a team and you know it's gonna be about 500 bucks a month, then you add that into your need number. So if your need number was 5,000, then make sure you make it like 6,000 perhaps to add for team and a couple other expenses, the things that you always say no to because you can't afford it, don't do that, right? Just put it into your need number. So make your need number, and your need number is probably about one to $3,000 more than what you think it is. That's what I would suggest. So then now you've got your need number, then you need a marketing plan. How are you going to get those numbers? How are you gonna hit those numbers? How many people do you have to talk to or get in front of? Do you have to get started speaking, networking? Do you need to do a lot more on social media to drive more traffic to your website? Do you need to spend money on Facebook ads and stuff? I don't usually recommend it. Uh, so that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother topic. Um, I'm all about free first, then pay. What can you do for free first in your marketing? Um, and then where do you need to really invest money? And usually you need to invest money in your website, your technology, that's like really important. You need to have make sure that you have a, a website that is the hub of your business, not just something that looks pretty or something that you just developed and you have no idea how it's gonna work to build your business. This day and age, you have to have a, the website be the hub of your business. So if you're in network marketing, you need to develop your own website, trust me you gotta have your own web presence. If you're just on Facebook in a group and trying to run your business that way, it's not gonna fly long term. You can't control Facebook. It's a place, Facebook is a marketing tool to bring people off of into your business. You gotta use it as a marketing tool, you guys. All right, so you gotta spend money on technology and team perhaps to set up that stuff or maybe even get some coaching around that to help you get the right things in place so you're not wasting money in the wrong places and. Pick me, I'm always willing to do that kind of stuff with you. Um, then you wanna look at team. So who do you need to hire? I know that I just hired another assistant. Actually, she has a whole team of people, and so they're gonna be taking over my follow-up tasks, which is a huge thing, right? I go to a lot of events, I speak at a lot of events, uh, I exhibit, I network, and I attend a lot of events. And I come back with leads galore all the time. And those are gold, right? That is money just slipping through your fingers if you're not following up. So I have a team specifically to, to do all of my follow-up, email, uh, direct mail, postcards, phone call follow-up, even connecting with people on social media like this from a live event. And a lot of it can be done by somebody else. So I have a team for that. I have team for technology. I have team for customer service and billing things. Um, you don't have to hire that all at once. Um, I have a team for a bookkeeper, accountant, all that kind of stuff too. But you gotta get started somewhere. Put some money in your need number for team. Trust me, you're not gonna be able to do this all yourself and build a really um, highly profitable business doing what you love without some team. <laughs> okay, and then, like, what do you wanna create next year? Do you wanna create or launch a new program, product, or service? Or do you wanna write a book? Do you wanna launch a retreat or a live event? Do you wanna do more joint venture collaborations? What are some big things, like big things you wanna put on the calendar for next year? My advice would be to not put too many things on the calendar. I know a few years I was in business, oh, I've been in business for 17 years, right? Almost 18, well, halfway to 18, I guess now. Uh, and I just, for years, I was just doing too many things and I would get burnt out. And so now I try to do maybe three or four things a year and that's it. Like I have a couple live events. I have a book that launches every year now, a compilation book where you can be an author in it, right? And then I run a couple groups and memberships and, and three, in fact, three memberships. And that's kind of where I'm spending my time besides getting speaking gigs. That's really where I wanna spend my time. I might relaunch one of my online programs, my speaker training. So if you wanna get started speaking, uh, you gotta watch my emails for that. I might uh, relaunch that and do it live again this year. But I just love helping people in groups and, and talking to people like this, but, but in more of an interactive setting where I can really help you uh, and answer your questions and put you on the hot seat and, and really dive in and do some laser coaching. That's what I love. And in fact, one of the memberships that I run, the International Entrepreneur Network, is something that you guys could join if you wanted to, if you're not already a part. I know some of you are. There's about 115 members in there now, and I'm looking to get 1,000 by this summer, you guys. I want 1,000 people in that group, and I'm putting it out there. 
That's one of my big picture goals is to get a thousand people in the International Entrepreneur Network by this summer and you can help by joining but also by sharing it and then the more people that are in it the more of us can collaborate and the more people that join that the more calls I'm going to add every month because I'm not going to be able to run you know seven or eight calls every month just to satisfy that number of people and most other coaches wouldn't run that many calls frankly I know they run memberships and they charge a monthly fee and they might pop in once or twice a month or do a call where they might talk to three or four people live on those calls I want to pack those calls so big I want to get everybody help all year long in the Facebook group but also on the zoom calls that we do if you'd like to learn more about that, just go to I Entrepreneur Network, the letter I, entrepreneurnetwork.com. It's seven bucks a month, you guys. Seriously, for $84 a year, you can come to up to three calls right now for free, it, well, included in your membership, and it's a mastermind. It's constant mastermind laser coaching. Highly recommend it. If you're a part of this group, you're gonna love those calls. They're laser coaching with me, but as we grow, like I said, I'm gonna be pulling members to run the calls. So the more, the sooner you get in and the more active you become, the more you'll be on my radar to potentially run one of those calls and get ex lots more exposure for yourself and your business. Um, so just an FYI, but go check it out. Again, $7 a month, I made it a no-brainer so I can help a lot of people who, whether you can afford it or not, you can afford $7 a month, for God's sakes. I know you're spending that on coffee or tchotchkes or something in the grocery store, gum and stuff that you don't need to be buying for seven bucks a month. All right, so continuing on with the marketing planning. So we need, <clears throat> if you're gonna launch new things, like a creation of a new product launch, or maybe you're gonna do a, a teleseminar or a video series where you're gonna invite people in, I really recommend you just launch one thing per quarter. Now that's if you're kind of newer in business. If you're a little bit more experienced and you have a bigger team, then it's possible that you could launch something every other month. But I would be very careful because that's a lot of promotion to your email list um, and a lot of creation and back-end stuff that needs to get set up for everything you do. So those are just some quick tips. I'd love to dive in uh, deeper with you individually if you have something in particular you're thinking about. Um, and keep in mind that if you're launching a live event or a retreat, um, if it's two or three days or more, you're definitely going to want like a four to six or seven month timeline ahead before you book it. Like right now, my next event is, I'm, I'm it's either going to be the end of March or end of April. Um, I'm logging in the hotel right now as we speak this week, and I'll be sending out emails and notifications when it's open for registration, but the Love and Money Live happens every spring, and so my list already knows that it's coming up. We just have to pick the dates, right? So, uh, yeah, so plan ahead for those kinds of things. Okay, the other thing you want to think about with planning is what are some other exposure opportunities you might have? Where can you get more exposure? Exposure gets you in front of a lot of people or other people's people, other people's communities and tribes, right? Where can you get more exposure? Now there's publicity, of course, you can get on your local TV or maybe even national, depending on what you're doing. Um, it's pretty easy these days to get into your local television news shows in the morning. I've been on about eight or nine different times for various different topics. It's not that difficult. I can show you how. I've got a client right now who's going after some publicity uh, this time of year, and I can't wait to find out where she's at with it. I'm going to talk to her tomorrow. Um, but getting publicity is really easy, so you need to have a plan for that. But what else can you do? Can you be on somebody's tele-summit or webinar summit or interview summit, you know, the kind where there's 20 or 30 experts and you share your expertise on a, on a recording, or maybe you donate a prize or a gift or something? to that uh, launch, then uh, that's a great exposure opportunity. How many of those can you do? You don't want to do too many at the same time, right? Because they make you promote them, and rightly so, as you're a part of it, you would promote it to your list. So you might only want to do one a quarter maybe, or one every other month perhaps, uh, but you want to look for those now for next year so you don't miss a whole quarter of being in one. There's a lot of them that start at the beginning of the year. Um, other exposure opportunities like I was talking about with joint venture partnerships and things 
where can you, you can partner, you guys, all of you can partner with somebody else in your network or client or community or a, a complimentary business person to you and you can do Facebook Lives. Like you could do Facebook Lives and if they have you on a Facebook Live to their group or in their community or even to their profile, you're being introduced um, a really warm introduction, mind you, to somebody else's entire tribe. And then you do it back to them and then it's a win-win situation. Or you do a joint one, you both promote the same thing. That is like one of the best marketing strategies still available to you today. Um, and Facebook will totally share all of that stuff because it's a Facebook Live, right? Now, if you did it on Zoom and then shared the Zoom information, they're not gonna share it as much because of the algorithms, right? So. If you can do some Facebook Lives, get over yourself if you don't like yourself on video. You have to get over that. The free first, then pay, right? Why would you pay for an ad on Facebook when you can do a video and reach so many more people, having other people share your video and like it and share it all over the place, than just running an ad? Why would you spend money when you can do something for free? It's just silly. Unless you want to do both and you have a bunch of money, then go ahead and do both. But there's so many things you can do for free. That's just one example. All right, then where else do you want to learn? What else do you want to learn this coming year? You got to put on your radar a couple of things you want to learn. People you want to learn from, strategies you want to learn more about. I believe that as an entrepreneur, we always have to stay up on sales and marketing for sure, okay? And online techie stuff. Now, you don't have to be a techie to know what to do with your technology. You just have to have a big picture overview understanding of how it all works and what kinds of things you, that might be helpful to implement into your business to make you more efficient, more productive, and so you can reach a lot more people. Now, you can implement or you can uh, hire a team or other people to help you implement those strategies, but don't go hiding your head in the sand, please, about technology. It will just slow your progress and your success just dramatically. You have to trust me, okay? So you wanna learn more about technology and, and what things that might be good for you. Now, don't be careful with that too because there's some bright, shiny objects out there, right? So somebody will say, ooh, you need to try this software, but you don't really. So if you're not that techie, be careful trying too many softwares. We just wanna be strategic with the efficient product, efficiency and productivity and profitability uh, type of things that can get you in front of more people, I think. Um, but like every once in a while, I wanna learn something else. So last year, this year was a big year about learning more about uh, storytelling for me. So I'm a speaker, I speak all over the country and in Canada and then virtually all the time, right? So I constantly wanna be telling better stories and putting more story into my speaking. Speaking of which, I should tell you a story. <laughs> and maybe I will when I'm done. Okay, and then, uh, but the year before, I was I went to a couple events about Facebook because there was a lot of new things coming out on Facebook and I wanted to be more educated on Facebook and other social media platforms. The year before that, I went to a podcast uh, seminar and so I could learn more about podcasting. Now I decided not to do a podcast, but being on podcasts is a very lucrative strategy as well and it's free as well. So there's a lot of different things you can do and learn about, um, but if you're not making the money that you need to make, then I would highly suggest you put my events on the calendar because they're all about the, the basic foundation revenue generating activities that you need to do every single day, week, month and year in your business to be more of a consistent revenue generating business. So they are the practical, tactical things you need to do and you can't avoid, mind you, you, you can avoid them, but you're not gonna make as much money. You can also go do bright, shiny object things and cool new video workshops and all this other stuff that you might learn, but if you don't have the basics in place and the foundational revenue generating activities and the follow-up and the technology and all the autoresponders and things that make the website the hub of your business, then none of the other advanced strategies that you do are really going to bring in all the money that you're looking to make. So you have to do things in order of importance, okay? So make sure you write down my website for my events, and then when I launch the events, you'll see what's coming up for next year. It's livebigevents.com, livebigevents.com. Uh, so it'll be a spring event and a fall event, the two three-day events that I'm going to do for sure. And then I might, I often sprinkle in some little one days too, if you're local. Then finally, 
Um, the part of planning that I love is so that it makes it all happen and everything flows together and make sure nothing can get lost, nothing gets you know, uh, forgotten is you have to calendarize this all. I call it calendarizing, right? I don't know if that's really a word or if I made that up, but we calendarize it. So you can get a big, huge wall calendar if you want to plot out the big things that you're doing throughout the year. Then you want to use a Google calendar perhaps. If you're going to have some team coming on, you really need an electronic calendar. So those of you who are still doing the paper calendar, you might have to give a little bit of that up because your team can't check what you're doing efficiently if it's all on your paper, on your desk, in your, in your room, right? So you need to, you know, let go of some of your control freakitis and embrace some of the things that can make you a lot more efficient, productive, and profitable. And I love showing people how to use the calendar systems, but also any of the stuff that we talked about today. This is all the stuff I do with clients and so much more. Um, I also look at uh, the things, what's going on in your personal life, because sometimes we can't work for a two or three uh, month or two or three week period because we have to take care of a loved one. So we have to make concessions in our marketing or our follow up or stuff in our plan for launching projects and things like that. And so I help you navigate all of that, put all of this in place and make it a smooth running money making business machine. So if you're interested, again, you can go to the iEntrepreneurNetwork.com, the letter I, entrepreneurnetwork.com join for seven bucks a month. You'll get me and some laser coaching a few times a month, but if you really want to sit down and plot out a strategy, I'll give you a discount. You guys, if you want to come to an initial planning meeting, just go sign up at askcat.biz, A-S-K-K-A-T dot B-I-Z. If you go to askcat.biz, you can sign up, fill out the questions there about your money goal, your bigger goals, your big vision, all that kind of stuff just so I have a little bit more background on you. And I'm glad to fit you in in December or January. It doesn't have to be December, it can be in January, but fill it out now so we can get you on the calendar so you can have some incentive, you know, um, have a deadline you wanna you know, reach to really get started jumpstarting your business. And for those of you who don't know me very well, I will tell you a little story. Um, so uh, back, when I started my business, it was in 2002, I used to work at the local uh, newspaper here in Sacramento. This is, people always ask me how I got started. So I was at the local newspaper, um, the Sacramento Bee newspaper, selling ads to local businesses. And I would literally go door to door, knock, 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 you know, on uh, businesses' doors and walk into different uh, businesses, brick and mortars, mind you, or I would go to the chamber events and I would meet a whole bunch of, you know, other entrepreneurs or people that worked from home. And that's, and then I would try to sell them ads into the newspaper. And what I found, well, I was pretty good at it, frankly, but what I found was that a lot of the business owners uh, just really didn't have any idea beyond the ad what then to do with the person that came in. They weren't good at upselling. They weren't good at continuing the conversation, meaning nurturing them in uh, via email or direct mail or phone after the sale. And they weren't really um, doing any follow-up whatsoever. Uh, even if someone came in and wrote a check, they would just deposit the check and not take the address and phone number off the check. Why would you do that? I don't know. So, but they didn't think beyond the, they would just throw money at advertising and all kinds of different advertising, but then they would go out of business in a couple of years. And so I learned how to be more consultative with them and really understand everything they were doing in their business and showing them how to really maximize and catapult, uh, um, maximize every little thing that they were doing in store, um, behind the scenes, their technology, their business operations, and uh, it was just a real eye-opener that I realized I, I knew a lot more than a lot of these business owners. So that's when I started my own business. And I started as a marketing consultant just in my local area here because I had no idea about this online world. There was no video. There was no Facebook. There was no, there was barely email. There was email marketing. But, and not everybody had a website back then because it was just kind of, oh, you have a website. It was kind of cool. Um, and we still had CDs in our cars <laughs> and uh, even tape decks, I think. It wasn't podcasts and online radio or any of that. So it was real guerrilla marketing grassroots uh, that 
how I started my business. And it wasn't till three years into my business when I finally went to a workshop like the ones I hold that blew me away. And like, oh my God, I can make money with talking to someone over the phone. Like I can talk to them about this and you're charging what for that? Like, holy crap. And they're making money. And so my mind was just blown. When I love to catch an entrepreneur when they're new, especially, and I can blow your mind the way else is possible. But what happens is I, I blow their minds and then they, then they get small. They're like, oh, but I'm new or oh, but nobody's going to pay me or oh, but that person's bigger than me. So I have to charge these rates instead of that rates because I'm, I'm near, not as good as them. But so I found that there was a lot of confidence issues with people and entrepreneurs, and I didn't have a lot of confidence issues. I had some, mind you, like I can charge what, but I would still try it because I was always in sales and marketing, right? Why not try? If you don't try, you don't ask, you don't receive, right? So I would try, and every time I went back to this one person's event, my first mentor, who was Allie Brown back in uh, 2006, I think is when I went to her first event, maybe 2005, I went to her event like five times, and her events were very practical, tactical, much like mine are now. And uh, I know she's changed a lot over the years, if you know who she is. Uh, but it was the it was the jump start I needed in order to really change my mindset, my business models, everything about what I was doing in my business. And I'm so thankful for that period of time. And it's funny because I, I grew up, so to speak, in the industry with people like Marie Forleo and Fabian Fredrickson and Adam Urbanski and people, and you know, it was just crazy. Some people that are hugely successful and then many of us are still just, you know, I don't want to say just, we're very successful, um, but maybe not in the millions, like a couple of, you know, it's a very small percentage of people who really get to that million dollar mark. Um, but I'm working on it still. Uh, but multiple six figures is still really, really good, mind you. So anywho, I, that's just a little bit about how I got started and so and why I have this vast experience. So I have a lot of offline marketing experience and I've had to learn all the online stuff. So there's a lot of other coaches out there who just know the online. They have no idea how to work a room in a live networking event, nor do they have any idea how to really set up an exhibitor booth or what to do with direct mail postcards and stuff like that, or get a mailing list so you can target a, a specific industry with direct mail and cold calling. I know how to do all of that stuff. And so I love working with any, lots of different types of clients, frankly, because it's more fun for me. If I had to work with the same type of client all the time, like just coaches and speakers, I'd be saying the same thing over and over and I don't even know, like I could probably just do it in my sleep, unfortunately. So I love to have the new challenge of a different kind of client where I can bring the ideas of one industry into another and it's just more fun for me. Plus it, it gets you outside of your um, comfort zone but also outside of your box in your particular industry. So come and see me if you would like to have a call, it's a complimentary call just to see what we can do together and if or how we can, you know, if or how I might be able to help you. Uh, don't forget you can go to ask cat.biz and sign up for a call with me today and we can we'll sign up today and we can always schedule it in January so no worries you don't have to do it next week in fact I'm, I'm booked next week so <laughs> so we need to sign up the sooner the better though so come into the entrepreneur network with me or come to a call and let's talk about other coaching options but do something you're in this group for a reason you're in this group for either resources connections uh, ways to grow your business. If you're not making the kind of money, you definitely want to talk to me if you're not making the money you want to make yet. All right. So hopefully this was helpful, you guys, a little bit on your planning journey. And I will put the link to that other planning call that I did, uh, as well as a training that I have. Um, it's like a low price training if you're interested in that. But uh, we'll have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.